Hello and welcome back to the Commander Lurpak YouTube channel. Um, sorry I haven't posted in a while, I've been quite busy with moving flats and just life in general, which is always fun. Uh, but everything's settled down a bit now and I've got a bit more time to record videos and do some painting, so I should be posting a bit more regular and I've got a cool new basement studio to record in, which is very nice. Uh, but anyway, in today's episode of the Warhammer 40k City Board Build, episode 4 I think it is, um, I will be showing you how I painted this section of the board and doing a little showcase of how things went. Um, so I'll stop waffling now and you can watch the episode. So to start off, I decided to glue on these small gems that are meant for nail art. Uh, these would represent rivets on the metal sections of the board. Um, I did this using a cocktail stick and tacky glue. Uh, this was quite a painstaking process and the gems were very small and fiddly. Um, but I think it will pay off in the painting stage because it will add a bit of extra detail to the flat surfaces and just give you something to highlight and texture. Uh, I picked up the gems using the cocktail stick with a little bit of glue that had started to uh, go off on it. So they just had enough uh, tackiness to pick up the gem and then it would uh, be stuck by the glue once it was on the surface. Uh, I did this for quite a lot of the metal sections, um, but it should pay off in the painting stage. Uh, patience was definitely key here. Uh, I'll leave a link to the gems in the description if anyone's interested. Next I used some burnt umber gouache paint as a rough base coat for all the metal sections of the board. Uh, this can be acquired quite thickly as it tends to uh, dry very thinly on the model and a much duller colour than what you put on. Uh, I used a sponge for a lot of it because uh, it gave a quite even coating. As with every part of the painting stage for this board section, everything just takes a very long time because of the scale of it. You're not just painting one metal section of a walkway, you're painting half a refinery. So everything just took a long time to actually finish. Once I'd finished the gouache undercoat, uh, I then went over it again with a dark brown just to give a bit of variation to the colour. I then uh, went over the top of this again with the burnt umber gouache just to uh, again vary the colour and really build up a, a varied texture on the surface of all the metal areas. This created a cool textured and stippled surface uh, which would be a great basis for me to build up a rusty looking texture on all the metal areas. For areas that were going to be particularly rusty I mixed together red and yellow craft paints in roughly equal parts. Then using a brush that's been very well used so that the hairs are somewhat splayed out I stippled on the orange paint that I've mixed up in areas where I wanted to be particularly rusty. Uh, the fact that the brush has been quite well used and splayed out means that it created quite a unique texture and it didn't look very painted, it looks more natural. Uh, this is quite important for rust to make it feel more real and less like it's been painted on. Once I was happy with the rust, I dry brushed on a cheap metallic craft paint using a large brush. I did this in areas where I wanted uh, the metal effect to almost show through and this really helped to sell the fact that it looked like metal. I then applied liquid masking fluid to the metal areas of the model that I wanted to then paint in bright colours to designate them as like fuel storage tanks um, or silos. Uh, the masking fluid is very cool, it basically means that paint that you put over the top of the areas that have the masking fluid, you can then peel off that layer of paint wherever you've put the masking fluid. 
So you put the masking fluid in areas that you want the rust to show through. And all you have to do is wait for the paint to dry and then using either a toothbrush or even just your finger, which I found to be more easy, to be honest. Uh, you just peel away that layer of paint and it will reveal the rusty layer that you've built up underneath. Uh, this creates a very natural looking rust layer as you are literally rusting the model and moving that layer of paint to reveal underneath. I then used some Humbral Weathering Powder. Uh, I think this one was a light rust color. Um, and I used this to apply a rusty pigment uh, to areas of the model that were heavily textured. And this works really well on this gantry uh, with the textured platform. And it just adds another layer of rust to the model. I really wanted to give it a well weathered feel. After finishing these steps, that's pretty much all the basic painting for the metal sections of the board done. All that's left now to do is to pick out some of the details and just add a bit more texture to some of the surfaces. I did this using Citadel Technical Paint Typhus Corrosion, which is a light brown paint with a sandy texture to it. The areas I decided to apply this to was anywhere that had natural detail on the metalwork, such as the rivets that we had added earlier and any raised sections of pipeworks. I added streaks from these sections to try and uh, give the idea that there had been leaks and where the weather had affected it. I then used Citadel Texture Paint um, Sterling Battlemire, which is textured again, but it's a darker brown than the Typhus Corrosion. Uh, this helped to give a bit of variety to the weathering that I was applying, so it wasn't just all one bland brown colour. It uh, made it feel a bit more natural and a bit more realistic. Uh, I think this worked quite well mixing the two paints together, and you can add a, as much or as little of this as you want, depending on how neglected you want the building to look. Next, I decided to add some propaganda posters to the board. These are quite fun, you can uh, find them in a variety of places online, but I used the ones that had been designed by Peachy from Warhammer TV for his Kill Team board. Uh, I'll leave a link to the PDF. Uh, just need to cut these out, which can be quite time consuming, uh, but they are worthwhile in the end. Then using Tacky Glue, I applied the posters where I wanted them on the board. Uh, I screwed up the posters a bit to give them a more weathered and tatty feel. You can apply as many or as few posters as you want, but um, I decided the more the merrier. To help blend the posters into the board even more, I decided to dry brush on uh, very lightly a black colour over the top. Uh, this just helps to dirty them up and they look much more natural. I repeated this process for all the posters so that they felt like they were part of the board and been, some have been put up for quite some time. I also uh, added some blood effects on a few of them just to uh, show that there had been some unfortunate casualties uh, around the board and that this was a war zone. This really helped to uh, add to the grim dark feel that I was trying to portray on this board. Next it was time to add some vegetation to the board. Uh, I like to use dried out roots to represent trees. I think they are the perfect scale for miniatures and look quite natural. And I think shows a neglected building or piece of terrain better than some trees growing where they're not supposed to. And I think this added quite a lot to the board. Another little detail I decided to add to the board was some graffiti. Um, I thought that it would be quite funny to have some messages and slogans 
painted on by either the citizens of the city or by the soldiers fighting and I thought I would represent uh, both sides with the messages that were displayed uh, just for a bit of fun. It was now finally time to start painting the building and I started this by dry brushing on over the top of the black undercoat, um, a dark grey just using craft paint again. Uh, I dry brushed it on because I wanted some of that dark black to show through underneath. Uh, this took quite some time because um, the building was quite detailed and has quite a few floors. Once I had finished the dark grey coating of all the building, I then went back and dry brushed over the top a light grey, almost white, uh, just to highlight uh, at the edges of the building, the window sills, where the cracks were. This really helps bring out the concrete texture that the uh, foam board that I built the building provided. Um, and then because I undercoated it black, it still had the shadows in the recesses. It was really good to, to uh, do this stage because the building started to come to life and all those details that I'd created in the rubble and in the building really started to come to life with the dry brushing of the, the highlight and it all started to look like it might be worthwhile. Again like pretty much all of the boards this took quite a few hours just dry brushing. Using a rusty brown colour that I mixed up, I painted all the rebar that I had put into the building. Uh, just, just helped it blend in with the weathered feel that I was going for. It wouldn't really make sense if it was still nice shiny metal. I then used this same browny rusty paint that I'd mixed up but watered it down uh, so that I could create these rush streak effects from wherever the rebar was uh, inside the concrete. I then carried on applying washes to the building, this time using a very watered down black uh, which I used to create the idea of water stains on the building uh, from the top, any window sills. I also mixed in some browns and greens as well to give it a more natural feel. I really think this uh, looks quite good on the building. I then decided to apply some stencils to the board. I did this uh, by cutting out the stencils on watercolour paper. I chose watercolour paper because it keeps its rigidity and its strength even when uh, paint is applied to it, whereas I found with thinner paper it would tear and go quite soft, uh, which wasn't very handy for applying stencils. Um, I used a sponge to apply the paint so that I could give it a stippled and textured feel. And it also meant that it was less likely to go underneath the stencil and onto areas of the uh, board that I didn't want the paint to go. I was really happy with how these came out and they had quite a manufactured and realistic feel because of the stencils and uh, tied in quite nicely with uh, wherever they were applied, either on the silos or the building itself. Uh, you could have whatever message you wanted displayed using the stencils. So the next step would have actually been to apply Vallejo thick European mud to the board. Uh, which you can see is now in between uh, all of the floor areas. However, sadly, this footage uh, was lost to the warp. Uh, so now we are straight on to the next step, which is applying some grass tufts to help blend in the mud with uh, the rest of the board. Uh, the Vallejo thick European mud was also applied to the bases of some of the buildings to blend the mud upwards. I also applied some grass tufts uh, to not just the muddy areas of the board but also onto some of the metal catwalk sections and also in the building itself to make it feel really run down and overgrown. 
The next step is very satisfying uh, where I apply AK Interactive puddles to the board. This is a uh, resin which is muddy coloured. So it's semi-transparent, but it has a, a muddy hue to it. Uh, and this gives a wet, glossy texture uh, to the mud. And it works really well with the Vallejo Thick European Mud, uh, which has a texture already. So this wet, glossy effect naturally uh, levels itself out and goes into all the craters and creates all these little muddy puddles. And I really wanted it to capture this wet, uh, muddy street feel, almost uh, inspired by um, how Stalingrad was described to be during World War II, uh, during winter. And I think this really helps to lend the uh, grim dark feel that the battle's been raging for so long in the streets of Vogue and that even the uh, streets have turned to this clogging mud. This was the last step before painting just some of the smaller details in the buildings, such as dead corpses and bookcases and just little things like that. And finally, the board is finished. All those months of hard work had come to fruition and I'm quite happy with the results. Uh, I'll just show you a little video um, showcasing the board uh, before we move on to the next step. I thought that the board was finished, but then disaster. Upon moving to my new flat, I discovered that it wouldn't fit through the doorway into my gaming basement. That left me with only one option. This is the one. Luckily this went pretty well and the board now resides in its new home. A great success! To finish the episode I'm going to show some of the photos that I've taken of the board. Um, just some cinematic shots of the little details and I've put out a, a small battle going on on the board. Thanks for watching the episode and I hope you enjoyed and um, hopefully see you for the next one. Take care.